Pro-Chancellor, Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor, and everyone here in this beautiful building, those watching on the live stream, and of course, the Masters of Professional Engineering Cohort 2019. Congratulations, graduates. You have got here. This evening, you walk out of Winthrop Hall with a degree with your name on it. That degree is a symbol of everything it took you to get here. Each of you has walked a different pathway to be here, and now you will take what you have learnt and use it to navigate the world outside university, whatever that is for you. Look around you tonight. Sitting with you are your cohort, the class of 2019. Up on the dais are those that taught you. And around you are the community of people who got you here by either supporting you in person or in kind. It took a community to get you here, and it is that community that will be cheering you on as you tackle the great questions that life will throw you. So, what can an arts graduate from the 1980s offer the Masters of Professional Engineering cohort of 2019? Well, I've spent the last 30 years working alongside engineers in operational businesses across this country. I've worn many different hats over that time, and one of those hats is being the person that people just like you come to talk about how they're going at work and sometimes at life. The world has changed so much in that 30 years, and while change has always been a constant, the rate of change continues to increase we are faced with big questions. We cannot be sure that the knowledge or ideas we held in the past will hold in the future. And we are being challenged to find answers. And this may feel exciting, or it may feel overwhelming. I read somewhere recently that if life is a game, it is more like a game of poker than a game of chess. On one hand, chess is a game of strategy. All the pieces are on the board, visible to all, and everything is known. You will win or lose by being the better player. However, in poker, the cards are mostly hidden, and you make decisions with imperfect information. Experience and knowledge will count for something, but any player can win or lose because of the cards they are dealt. And the real world is one of making decisions with imperfect information in changing circumstances and dealing with the cards you are dealt. Through years of coaching and mentoring, I've noticed that there are things that some people do that enable them to navigate and thrive in this imperfect and sometimes messy world. And so tonight I want to talk to you about three things that I've learned from those people. One, accept that life will have ups and downs. I mentor a UWA Commerce student, and a couple of months ago, we were sitting in a cafe on campus, and he said, how do I have a life that goes like this instead of a life that goes like this? It's a common question. Unfortunately, life doesn't work like that, and everyone's life is way more complex than their Instagram account would suggest. The first step to thriving in an uncertain and ambiguous world is to accept that it is uncertain and ambiguous. Instead of expecting a smooth life, expect an interesting life in which you will have great moments and the odd curveball. The people I meet who thrive in this environment tend to anticipate and plan for as many curveballs as they can think of, even though they hope they never eventuate. This may sound dark, however, having a response plan will help you smooth out those bumps, and even if it doesn't, then make sure you learn from them and use that knowledge wisely. And if you know someone who's experiencing a curveball, be there for them, because that's what community is for. Two, be curious and ask lots of questions. Our brain is wired to develop shortcuts. These shortcuts help us filter out the millions of pieces of information that flood our brain every day, so we can manage everyday tasks without our brains exploding. So it's harder to be curious than you think. Your brain literally tries to prevent it. And when you feel that you know something for sure, 
you are hardwired to reject anything that tries to counteract that. And so we can miss critical information that can help us. So I'd like to set you a challenge to counteract that. Next time someone says something that you disagree with, instead of responding with your view, get curious and ask a question. And keep asking questions and questions only until you feel you understand their view. Leading questions are not allowed. This will require practice and a fair bit of patience. However, if you do this, I promise you, you'll be amazed at the perspective it will give you. Three, and this is very important, play well with others. Contrary to the image of the lone genius, the big questions will not be solved by yourself sitting alone. Even if you prefer to work alone, the stickiest and most innovative solutions come from openly sharing your ideas with others and allowing them to critique them. If you want to make a difference, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Build strong, long-term relationships both within and outside your field. Be the person who opens your circle and lets someone join your group, and you could practise that later on tonight at the reception. Encourage others to test your assumptions and perhaps even your beliefs. You are a UWA graduate, so I'm sure I haven't told you anything you don't already know. The challenge, though, is to do it, and I have every confidence that you will. In my opinion, you are part of the smartest, most engaged student cohorts yet. You are already showing us the way in many of the big questions, and frankly, we need you to shake things up. So walk out of here tonight with your hard-earned degree and your head held high, keep in touch with your cohort, and continue to build a community around you. Keep your ears listening wide and your mind wide open. You will be awesome, and I, for one, am looking forward to seeing the results. Thank you.